Hey, this is Nick from Gamer Plus Productions, and with us today we have special guest Griffin Ramsey. How Hi. are you doing today, Griffin? I'm awesome. It's actually pretty decent out. It's not hot for a change. Some of you, you may not raining. know uh, what the fort is, so I was curious if you could explain to everybody what exactly you do at the fort. That's a good question. Um, well, it's kind of... I was looking through, I have this sketchbook that I keep ideas and lists of things to do for the fort, and it really kind of has transformed. I don't know that people are aware of how much it's transformed as, as far as, because we've only shown so much, but it started off, I had no idea what I was doing with it. I just kind of on a whim was looking for something else to do after I left Rooster Teeth. I was driving around the east side aimlessly and um, looking for opportunities. And I came across this space on Craigslist and uh, I called the landlord, and he said, well, you know, I've got some people. They're about to take it. They finally got a group of people together to rent it, but they're not going to be here for another 15 minutes if you want to swing by. And I sped over here and walked in the door. There was a G over the door, and there is a, you can see, like a sliding bay door, which is something that I was really attached to um, in my workspace at Rooster Teeth. So I swooped it up like I just said hey I'll take it and all the guys like walked up just as they had their like whole crew together and I'm kind of bad about it but I'm friends with uh, the main guy now so he doesn't hold it against me. Do you find yourself getting more inspiration from living in Texas or have any of your ideas or techniques changed? Well I mean a lot of it is based on what I can find and Texas I, mean, I just got back from Oregon and I bought a bunch of material because um, we really don't have a lot to work with down here at least for chainsaw carving, you don't want to. I haven't really used the hardwood yet. I'm going to try. I got some walnut. Um, but for the most part, there's only eastern red cedar, which is, you can't get it very big. Like the largest piece I've been able to find so far has maybe been about that, which when you subtract, it's really not a lot. So my work is sort of influenced by what I can even find, you know. You mentioned in another interview that your favorite piece of work was your totem pole, since you grew up surrounded by them. Since then, has any other work taken the top spot? Um, you know, I don't know, because um, I'll be really satisfied with something. And then it's interesting what, what other people take a shine to versus what I do, you know? And, and a lot of it has to do with price, because I'll put a lot, like a pointless amount of detail into something to where I can't possibly charge less than a certain amount, but then no one can buy it either. Um, and I guess it's good, because then you end up holding out of those pieces, and they're the ones you want to show off anyway. But... Um, <clears throat> I think that I've noticed, like, the the less glamorous, like, the, the owls, the, the simplest things that I've made, and the vintage tattoo carvings are kind of simple, too, and small. They seem to sell the most, and I have to say that I've been kind of getting into selling. Like, it's really satisfying to have somebody want to buy something and actually give you money for it, you know? It feels like you're doing something right. So as much as I love doing the really large scale, and I really would love to get back to large scale, big, dramatic pieces, I don't have any more room because they're not selling, you know? Like, they're sort of piling up in here. Oh, let me show you. Hold on. This is the one I'm probably the most proud of, detail-wise, but I don't know that it's ever going to sell because it's the most expensive. That is quite the beautiful piece of work. Uh, how much do you have that listed as? Um, I put it down for twenty-eight fifty because I just put so many hours into it. Hold on. So you can see it's like a naga, but instead of a snake body, it's her braid. Well, yeah, we'll see. Nobody's buying it. So. What about that anchor you just did? You plan on selling that one? Yeah, that's probably going to go pretty quickly because it's smaller. Um, yeah, I think it'll go quickly. Plus, I think ta the tattoo idea I like because so many people love tattoos, and I love tattoos, and it is kind of nice. As much as I love the big dramatic pieces that take a while, it is nice to have something you can crank out pretty fast, you know, because um, I lose interest quickly. So if I can get it done a day or two days, that's really good for me. It is kind of hard because, especially some of the other carvers, they sell their stuff so inexpensively, but they're a lot faster. But then again, like, if you, as you get faster, you make more money. That's just how it goes. But I think that you have to, it's not that I want to be an asshole sometimes when I charge too much for something, but you have to kind of set a standard and say, this is my work is worth this much. And then that kind of weeds people out, you know, like, and I find that the less you get paid for a gig, like I do design work as well, the less you get paid for a gig, the less respect you get. So 